I, I, I be seeing signs Every time I cross the line When you cross my mind Then I know better But body don't do me no better Felt that it betrayed me Like lately it pains me To part legs like it did to part ways Over 30 day notice to pack Are we created in our fiction In fact, both hated and both relapsed Trapped in the cycle of the spirit of the spiral Who knows the pain like I do? My partner in creation Parting ourselves to make a situation Without healing involuntarily Dead our animation without killing Didn't come without no crying Didn't come without no silence Like voices in the silence What is spirit trying to say? About the foundation I lay And the power it don't take To do without meaning to make Power it don't take to do without meaning to make a good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn the lesson so hard it left a scar. Left a scar. A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn this lesson so deep it won't repeat. Repeat. A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn the lesson so hard it left a scar. Left a scar. A good bully teach good. what you ain't learn fully. Learn this lesson so deep it won't repeat. Nothing worse than sharing kids with others. Dysfunctional bitch, she'll try her best to hold them hostage on some torturing shit. Parental alienation, current abomination. No different than master selling an infant from off the plantation. What possesses you to be like Satan? What afflictions had you picked me for tormenting? Codependent, maybe from generational trauma. Never in life did I expect to have a crazy baby mama. I preferred a wife raising my daughter without trauma. But those must be fairy tales when you are from the bottom. Often, our deep the stars come from wolf and sheep clothing Learning to take advantage of your heart and leave it broken I pray for every victim of a piece of narcissism Not to overlook their pain Yeah, and hopefully you learn to lie from that good bully So it never happens again A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn this lesson so hard it left a scar. Left a scar. A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn this lesson so deep it won't repeat. Repeat. A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn the lesson so hard it left a scar. Left a scar. A good bully teach what you ain't learn fully. Learn this lesson so deep it won't repeat. Repeat. Nigga, I said, oh. Okay, okay. okay. There comes a time you got to talk. Very seldom do you have this type of talk. Champagne 
glass is clean. The team of the light, the drinks with the ice, the DJ, the mic, the speakers, the lights. I'm a big deal, believe in the hype. And I'm a star of the show, and queen for a night. The team of the light, the drinks with the ice, the DJ, the mic, the speakers, the lights. I'm a big deal, believe in the hype. And I'm a star of the show, queen for a night. What you know about industry parties at the bar mingling with artists, the largest stars in the business? Okay. What you know about industry parties at the bar mingling with artists, the largest stars in the business? I remember. Hosted a ditty party in Vegas. Couldn't believe who I was on stage I remember. with. Birdman's birthday. Club Lynn. M.I.A. I love it. I'm a red carpet VIP for sure. Probably see me on the floor at Yeah, yeah. I don't rock no rollie on my wrist. I rock Emma 
I don't rock no gold chain on my neck. I rock amethyst. All I smoke is purple cannabis. I rock amethyst. Yeah, I rock amethyst. I don't think that they can handle this. Handle this. Yeah, you know I'm trying to channel shit. Rock purple amethyst. Yeah, you know I rock that amethyst. You can't handle this. Yeah, you know I'm trying to channel shit. Rock purple amethyst. Yeah, you know I rock that amethyst. Yeah, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, DJ Row. This is Trika No Better, Do Better. We're about to play a few more uh, jams. We're going to get it started. Trika No Better, Do Better. Let's go. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Get this money. Ooh. Living it up. Dropping in on a hundred foot swell off the coast Drinking my hand blood lit up to roast Taking no time to relax my mind Floating on the seven seas leaving folks behind See my grind is all about the wheat and beat And the shit that I sip to complete my technique I'm that freak to street by naked in the street for the girls who like my surfboard and their meat here's a treat got you wide open when i speak as i press that board but both get in the lead who i see like a stunt on the brink on the brink of jumping in the ocean just so i can think at the bottom got drugs yeah i got them and if you need something yo no problem thumbtack living life on the road to success getting wavy out the sanctuary when i'm out west Stop, drop, and roll, and roll, and roll, and we still ain't done. Crack a dawn with this party till I see the sun. Rising up from the east, drink still ice cold. Rolling up another one because I'm feeling bold. Yeah, I got to be at work before it strikes six. Got a bird in my lap and she's stroking my stick. I slide in the big dick and the girl starts to drive at the snap of the whip. Wild horses on seesaw, penetrating whole raw hides and no draws. No claws, no lumps of bumps on the snap. Tight, tight away, smash smooth like a Cadillac. Ooh. I drive down her avenue. Thumbtack refuse to lose to leave it in while I'm busting spray it all on the map. I'm Pinocchio, baby. I got some strings attached. Come on. Drop, drop, Oh, one more hit, one more shot, take it to the top. Champagne bottles go pop, go pop. In a key of okay, being chased by the cops, the cops. This shit don't stop. I'm on the freeway, 94 headed eastbound. Swam in a swimming pool of alcohol and drown. So wavy, swerving lanes and stuff. The big bad wolf by huff and puff, puff. And blow the whole house of cards away. Spitting bars on tracks with no delay. Yo, did you hear what I say? I, say. I drop chocolate until I see Judgment Day. Chocolate. Ricky Bobby shaking bass. Shaking bass. Shaking bass. While the girl is passing cake. Passing cake. Passing cake. Ain't no limit what I make. What I, make. I stay wavy while I stay awake. Stay awake. Stop, drop the roll. Stop, drop the roll. Stop, drop the roll. Stop, drop the roll. Stop, <laughs> Yeah. I'm out with the fellas, that shit you can tell us, a bike dip, pocket full of grip, young on my hip, hoping don't go there, trying to play games, you ain't going nowhere, I'm out with the fellas, that shit you can tell us, a bike dip, pocket full of grip, thing on my hip, hope it don't go there, trying to play games, you ain't going nowhere, 
Friday night, fresh off of work, kids good. So some fun, I search. Hit up the squad, what's the plan? I'm headed to the action, no, I'm not playing. Pull up to the spot, pack crowd. Walk through that bitch, puffing no loud in my section. I need six bottles. First you get the money, then the rest will follow. Feeling good, I gave her a tip. My look good, shaking her hip. Five nights. I'm all in the mode, yeah. yeah. Trauma, cause we all on some grown oh, shit. Relaxing, taking more shots. More shots. Rolling up the next until we get up. to the top. I'm hot. I'm hot. Order me cold on the holler. See some chick fighting. And while Did I'm smiling, cause I'm stress free. Fucking with my fellas and some young go. I'm out with yeah. the fellas. Yeah. That shit you can tell yeah. us. Stay by dip. Pocket full of grip. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on my hip. Hope it don't go there. Yeah. Trying to play games. You yeah. ain't going nowhere. I'm out with the fellas. Yeah. That shit you can tell us. Stay yeah. by dip. Yeah. Pocket full of grip. Yeah. Thing on my hip. Hope it don't go there. Trying to play games. You ain't going nowhere. Yo, DJ Row. Welcome back. Welcome back. (laughs) Yes. Welcome, No Better Do Better, everybody. I'm Trika. That's DJ Row playing the music, getting us warmed up for the show. While we worked out the kinks. What up, D? I see you. What's going going on? The hair getting long, man. Is that a wig? Nah, nah. It's it's, a scalp, you feel me? My goodness. Uh, It ain't been that long since I've seen you. (laughs) Since we've seen you on the show, but you're looking different. Welcome back. Thank you for coming through. So good. Yeah, man. Um... Everything is everything. Every time I get to get to get, get to getting my shit all together on time, something happened uh technical difficulties. But we here, we here. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing today? How y'all living, fellas? I'm alive, baby. I'm alive. Hurricane James in the building. What's happening? Hooray. <laughs> mm-hmm. James, you know D. Y'all Ooh. Valley High, right? Ooh, y'all know each other. About? Who are you talking about? James yeah. and Daryl. Probably oh. met years ago back in the sandbox, you know what I'm saying? It's the oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Track runners too. I'm sure yeah. we done pass, cross paths at some point in Sacramento. Yeah, probably, probably have. Yeah. Back in the day, Sacramento know. was even, and then back when we was kids, Sacramento was even smaller. So we definitely probably crossed. Oh, uh, what, what's your last name, bro? Let's start Bulls. Start with a B. And Bulls, yeah, no, nah, I was Daryl Woods. Nah, yep. Yeah, um, uh, Wait, Jimmy, who who was on here that you knew last time? And I was like, I don't know how you know them. I don't remember. I can't remember either, but it was somebody from high school that went to high school with us, D. I was nominate. Say Sackville is a small place. How is Sack right now? Is it is it warming up? Is it still rainy? How's it feel? Oh, it, it was a beautiful day today. We lighten the big here. Okay, so how, what is what's the what's the game number? What's, what's the Kings doing? You said what the what's the who? What the Kings doing? What's the record? I mean, they the third seed in the West. They play the Warriors starting on Saturday. Oh, they mm-hmm. haven't played the first game yet. No, no. first game is Saturday. Mm. Okay. Obviously, I haven't been keeping up with playoffs. Uh, I kind of fell off on sports a little bit a couple years ago, but it is what it is. It's <laughs> oh, good to see Sacramento, though. I mean, that's because most of your teams, you know what I mean? We ain't going to go there. We ain't going to go there. You, you know, know what? <laughs> most of my teams, what, James? I mean, most of my teams are winners and they're champions. That's what it is. When was the last time one of your teams won one of them things? And I ain't talking about show. Actually, they didn't pull it off either. Damn. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
cold blooded. <laughs> That's still fresh, man. You gotta give me at least another two weeks. Hey, I, I, was, I was rooting for y'all though, but I knew y'all was just too small for them boys. Them UConn boys was giants, yeah, man. They had us looking like high school JV out there. Mm, mm, mm. We fought hard. We fought hard though. At no, least we just. Hey. Hey, y'all went way farther than them players probably thought they had going at the beginning of the season. Y'all did good, oh, though. Yeah. I'm just saying. You got to keep it real, man. I, I play sports. You you got to keep it real with yourself. Of course. I play you, sports, too. I course, went to the damn school course, when they wasn't course, shit. So I we always, I'm just saying, of course, we want to be that squad. We want to get that. But come on, man. Sometimes you be like, hey, man, I don't, hey, we good. But I don't know if we that good. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's hey, not in, I, that they, they, they done made quite a few runs in the past. They always got yeah. that that come out and do something. You know what I mean? They sneaky good. Yeah. yeah. It's like I was I was show up to attract me. I knew who I wasn't just going outright beat, and I knew some cats said I might catch this motherfucker today. But I yeah. knew. <laughs> get out here, yeah. that. Yeah, unless unless God get beneath my my feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a realistic person. This, this running, I'm a very realistic a, person. This nigga running I never a ten eight. Like don't go in there hey, and whoop me. Hey, the dude running a ten eight hundred. I ain't got heat on him. I know that already. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I, yeah. that's why I never got in bragged on no social media. Like, we about to whoop on UConn. Nah, UConn got but championships. But y'all, y'all did y'all thing, though. Y'all y'all represented Cali, you know what I mean? Y'all did y'all thing. Nobody expected y'all to be there. Y'all did y'all thing. Yeah. We'll be all right. We did good. We made yeah. history. Parade. I'd have throw a parade anyway. Fuck it. I, that's what you I was what saying. I, mean? I was like, we should just throw a parade just because you know they were still right. out there partying and drinking and shit. San Diego I mean, way, for any fucking the, reason. I mean, the way I look at it, look at college. How many Division One programs are there in the country, and y'all made it to the last two? You know what I mean? Right. Like right. 168 that compete. Yeah, you know what I'm I mean that's especially that's from that's California. So that's an, that's an accomplishment. It's a major accomplishment. I, I I still say, look, my school made history. And the fact that I've been there since they wasn't doing shit, and I've been on this ride, so we did good. I'm proud of us, you know. Hey, you know Kawhi Leonard. Y'all know Kawhi Leonard. That's your. Uh, that's one of your alumni right there. Yeah, but I mean, there was people that went through SDSU before him that was cold. They just Marcus didn't have Marcus, a team. Yeah. Mark Fox was dope in football. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, Steve Fisher, he's a hell of a coach. He's the one that started that program on that winning shit. Yeah, he's yeah. he's from UCLA. Yeah, he go crazy. Yeah. But yeah. I just I want to see what these Kings gonna do. I want to see the Kings go far. Oh, we should have yeah. hey, My only hard thing, the only hard thing with them is you know, putting on the city is they was they historically had the most best efficiency on offense than any team ever in NBA history. That's an accomplishment. The cold part is the Warriors was number two. Mm-hmm. Offense, one and two. The cold part is defense, though. The Kings is 25th in the league. So that's going to be where the drama is. Can they The Warriors play? ain't nothing like 17th. They ain't that good either. Yeah, but 17th ain't 25, and one and two is back-to-back. You know what I mean? So that's the point. Can they in that, situational, they in situational basketball – yeah, I mean, yeah, and then you got the experience part. In situational basketball, will they be able to, you know what I mean? Hey, that's let, be the, what I'm telling you, this, uh, De'Aaron Fox about to have a coming out party. He about to start being mentioned amongst the greats after the playoff run. I, ho- I hope he do. I hope he do. I'm moving for the brother, you know what I mean? When no, Shaq do good, you know, he does good, you know what I mean? Hey, fresh you married, newborn baby, it's all lining up for him, you know what I mean? First time in the playoffs, yeah. crazy. Oh yeah, definitely. Man. I mean, definitely. so it, what's the city like with all this acti- activity with the team? Is it uh, like? I mean, everybody happy. I mean, just like I said, when the Kings do well, even if you ain't a fan of them, the city do well. Like that's not my number one slot. But if they do well, the city does well. So you yeah. know what I mean? That's, we needed this. The bar, I mean, you it brings money when 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 everybody's getting paid, everybody's happy. The bars is. Cracking the waitresses yeah. is getting tips, taking home to the, the, the family. You know what I mean? The restaurants is popping. You know, I'm it's, like, it's like when you go, 
you go downtown and go somewhere, he'd be like, oh, it's dead out here. It's sack. Sack is whack. But if it's live and popping, he'd be like, oh, shit, I'm going to kick it for a minute. So right. if the Kings is doing well, the city doing well. It's pretty much um, it. Sacramento definitely need to pick me up because that city is is down, down in the energy area. A little bit. And it's because of the people. I tell people, man, people be like, oh, sack is whack. I mean, that's because you whack. Because the people would make it crack. Right. So, you know, like I tell promoters, promoters, people be like, oh, man, your party was whack. I was like, nah, it's not you. Your, your followers are what make the party crack because mm -hmm. they're the ones that show up or not. So if you got weak followers, then your party going to be weak. <laughs> you got you got strong followers, then your party be cracking. It's just it's simple. Yeah. It's simple. I ain't going to simple. I bet. I bet. You I said what now? Anywhere, though. They they don't yeah, know I mean, brass bands in Northern California and all straight from SAC. So it ain't a SAC thing. It ain't a city. Like you said, it's right, like, right, right. It's sick. And it right. all plays a role. Yeah. It all plays a role. Wait, what did you say, Dave, about the brass band? Hey, you got a few dollars in SAC. You're going to enjoy yourself. You just can't be in SAC trying to get by. You got to be in SAC. Hey, yeah, you that's can't be broke thinking you're going to have a ball. That's not going to fly. <laughs> that's not going to fly. I don't care where you go. And my problem with that is there'll be some good events out here and people don't want to spend the money because they're like, oh, it's a sack. I'm not spending $20 for that. But they'll go out of town and spend $2,000 on some shit that might not crack either. <laughs> right. Just, because, just to say they're out of town. I'll be like, that should be killing me. I'm like, these people are weird. No, I just think, I don't think, I, well, I won't say is that people are, you know, hella broke right now. Like you said, I just think that people really don't support what they should be supporting. Like, they'd rather give their money to somebody who's making millions. Don't give a damn about them. Instead yeah. of going somewhere locally and supporting make one of their homies or somebody from their local area or their city and getting that shit cracking to make help build the energy for your city. And it'll bring more people to your city. Like, I don't think people understand the dynamics of how that works. They don't but or they don't care. They don't care because a lot of people used to come through Sacramento. Like, not too long ago, shit, Harlow's used to be cracking when I lived in Sacramento, the beginning of the time when I lived in Sacramento, moving when I, I moved mean, back. Harlow still gets his moments, you know what I mean? It just depends what's going on there. I mean, they don't, the nightclub part don't really crack like that, but they still get bomb-ass concerts and bomb-ass shows, so. Like, we just and had, uh, KRS-One was just out here. You know really? I mean? Yeah, at Harlow. That's what's up. And see, and I was just about to ask, like, are there still venues out there? Because I know, wait, what was the other place? Blue Note? No. Blue Note. I don't know if Blue Note's still cracking off, but I mean, you still got Harlow's. You still got Ace of Spades. Live Nation took over Ace of Spades, so it's a little oh, bit different Ace now. Ace of Spades, that's what it was. Uh, you know, you still got those venues. We still get all kinds of other concerts because of the big venues. I mean, the Golden One, the Kings Arena be popping even when the Kings ain't popping. They done had every concert you can name of at that thing. Yeah. Hmm. They be having uh, the little rodeo shit. That shit be going for two days, cracking. You can't even get a parking spot downtown when that shit's going on. <laughs> I haven't even been around seeing the new arena. And when last time I seen the arena, it was the mall. So yeah, oh yeah, it's it weird to imagine there. there's an arena right there in the middle of fucking downtown. Good. And then we get a lot of little summer festivals, like the Soul Bloom Festival is supposed to crack off in Discovery Park. But uh, they had to postpone it because every winter, Discovery Park floods out. And uh, we had a lot of rain. So they had to postpone that. You got coming up, not necessarily in Sacramento, but in Napa, you got the Blue Note Jazz Fest, which is really jazz, R&B, and hip-hop. Dave Chappelle is hosting. Uh, mm. Marvin, Marvin Glasper is putting it on. You got uh, Nas going to be performing. You got uh, it's, it's, it's hella artists on that one. You know what I mean? Talib Kweli will be out there. Uh, you know, Dave Chappelle showing up, he it's gonna be cracking anyway. <laughs> yeah. So he oh, yeah. You get Dave Chappelle out there, you're gonna have all kinds of people out there going yeah. crazy. You know, all kinds of people there. So they have a lot of off. legends. A lot of people come through San Diego, but a lot of people don't be going to the shows. This is crazy. Like Thunder Thunder Valley be having a whole bunch of concert series. Maybe you know Thunder Valley be getting it in with the concerts. Don't they got the new stadium at Thunder Valley, the new concert pavilion? 
Yeah, they got the new concert. They got the outdoor spot and the indoor concert venue out there. Yeah. So they got they got like but Bruno Mars is out here at Thunder Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Speaking of concerts, D, when is you, when you gonna start doing concerts again? When you gonna start some shows? Shit, I'm working on a project right now. You know, I just did the show with Lil Flip last summer. So that was that was the last big thing we did. Now we just land low to the album done, push the next single and go from there. And uh, so probably this summer, you'll be seeing something happen this summer. Where was the Lil Flip show at? I it was Iron Soul. Okay. Then mm-hmm. was it the turnout? I damn sure missed that. Yeah, wow. it, it was fun. That's good. Yeah. I know for a minute you was you was doing doing the the shows tough, but I know everybody's slowed down. <laughs> I know everybody slowed down for real for a minute. When are you expecting your project to be done? Uh, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm already it, so I give myself like six more taking my time. I need the right right uh, producer to really fill out the of it. You know what I mean? Get half of it in play. So I got five. Right, they can't. Okay. Uh, I mean, I um, I keep telling myself I need to get back in the studio, but I don't know if I still got it or not. I still be, I be like nervous, which I don't know why. But. Hey, crazy! I share this with you because I had to have this talk with myself. If you're trying to impress these kids, then yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. You know what I mean? However, if you're if you're doing it in order to do your music, e- express yourself, remember that when we grew up, hip hop fans topped out at like 40 years old. Now we got hip hop fans that are 80, 90 years old. Right. So they they want to hear the message we got and they want to hear what we're talking about. So, you know, keep that in mind when, when it comes to making your music and putting yourself out there. You really want to be able to know Hey, it's somebody that want to hear me. You know what I mean? I ain't got to worry about selling to 15 to 20 year olds if I'm selling to 40 to 55 year olds. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. They still buying records and they got jobs. So they really buying records. And they right? got money to buy the music. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, and I, w- I wouldn't even say I would be doing it for like the mainstream crowd, you know, because I'm them little kids don't know what I'm talking about. And I damn sure don't listen to what they talking about like that. So it's just like, uh, oh, and Sean said the place was Blue Lint. That's why I said. I said Blue Note. Blue Lint was the place. Thank you, Sean, Sean. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, um, it's really been on me, though. It's really been on my heart. That's why I know it's something I'm like, okay, you really need to, like, really get up out, get off your ass and get out, get out your own way type of thing. Like, and I think really what it is is that, I would make music that ain't gonna sound like with anything that's popular right now. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, who wanna listen to me? But like you said, there are people our age who do wanna hear the real shit and hear the same stuff that we grew up on. I just don't think there's a whole lot of that right now. Um, what's, what would you say would be the focus of your, uh, your new project? Motivational music. You know what I'm saying? Staying motivated, staying, staying happy, staying, staying positive about being alive. You know what I mean? Just, just enjoy, enjoying adulthood. You know what I mean? It's still, it's still adventures in this life. You know what I mean? We, uh, we, we, we thought watching our our grandparents and our great grandparents. We thought after thirty it was over, not knowing they was hiding the good stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> they good stuff. You know what I mean? It's funny you say that because I legit woke up yesterday and I was like, I'm glad I'm getting older. Like, why was everybody so, why everybody trying to stay young? Like, it's a blessing to get wiser, you know, to mature, to get through this life. Like, I don't know. Like you said, it got better after 30. I went through a period when I had to figure out who I, who the fuck I really was. But now that I'm on track with that, 
Life is all so much better now. The dopest feeling is going out into the world and facing it and coming home and not having to deal with nobody else's hangovers, but actually just either enjoying your victories or plotting and planning on your next mission if the mission didn't go the way you wanted it. But it don't matter because it's your world once you get home. It's, 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 your, it's your man or woman you chose. It's your pet you chose. It's your decorations you chose, whatever. Like, if you got a dungeon, you know me, I'm in the man cave right now. You know what I'm saying? You got the... <laughs> Like, stay in the man cave. <laughs> do you do what you do, and it just it, it re-energizes you and puts you out there to just keep going and keep moving. You know what I'm saying? So, I I enjoy adulthood. You know what I mean? Like, I I was blessed to have a dope ass. You know what I mean? Youth. You know what I mean? Being a good athlete and all that kind of stuff. But it's even more enjoyable being a, a successful adult. You could say. Mm-hmm. So thriving adult. That shit's a lot of work, though. Oh yeah, it ain't for it, it's not for the week. It definitely no. is not for the week. Brother, don't but sleep. I think, it, <laughs> I think a lot of it too is a choice. I think a lot of people don't choose to live life in happiness, or you know, as they best self. You know, it's easier not to. It's work to to live in your highest. So I do work all the time. I think I'm still coming out of my little monk phase right now, but sometimes I have to go into, you know, my little hermit mode and I just stick to myself for a couple of weeks. But a lot of people can't do that. Some people don't even like themselves enough to stick with themselves for a couple hours. So. Well, hey, being grown paying these bills is ghetto. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's ghetto as hell. Oh, man. It is. I never thought I've had so many bills. My mama ain't had this many bills going up. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she did. She just didn't pay them all. Nah. No, no. Think about it, though. So this kind of piggybacks on some of the ideas we spoke on last time when like, it didn't take as much money to raise a family back then as it does now because of all the extra shit there is that we spend money on. Streaming services, memberships. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have that. You was lucky if you had cable. Yes, you know I mean? So yeah. now you be having cable plus Disney Plus, plus Netflix, plus Hulu, plus, you know what I mean? So it's just, there's always more shit, satellite radio, all this extra shit we pay for. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think people, people necessarily don't necessarily have to have all that shit, but if no, they no, got it, no. If they got it, yeah. they can they they make enough to, to do it. You know what I'm saying? So or they go get enough to make it happen. So I'm just I saying mean, on, on base level, there weren't as many things because they didn't even exist to pay for. So right. that's the difference. You know what I mean? Like I was thinking there was a time where I didn't even that. have a phone, like a house phone at times. And I'm thinking, right. like, how the fuck did we make it through those times when the phone got cut off? Because there's no house, nobody had no cell phones. But we knew we how to come. One, we knew how to write checks back then. You know how many motherfuckers don't know how to write a check? <laughs> Man, those people don't even know how to don't even own a checkbook. They Never a seen checkbook. a check. Right. We had to communicate back then. You know what I mean? Like everybody had to communicate. Like if you wanted to kick it with your friends after school, y'all had to know the plan beforehand. Because if somebody changed the plan, everybody going to be lost. You're like, hey, we're going to meet at Orange Julius at Florham Mall <laughs> at, at 4.30. Everybody be there. You had to pass it around. You know and what? you had to stick with it. You had to stick with it. You couldn't change it after that. You had to stick with it. And then once y'all get there, then you can change the plan. Because nowadays, you have cats that meet in the same place and can't find each other. They use the name for where you at. I'm right here, right in front of you, like. They just be changing shit on the fly. We can't change. We could have changed shit on the fly. You had to stick with a plan. Even as, even as little kids, though, sometimes we didn't have no damn watch or no clocks and shit. We still knew where to go find people, where to be at what time. Yeah, you knew where their house was at, where all the bikes was in the yard. That's where everybody was at. <laughs> you know, remember, remember the green box? <laughs> yes. The little, the little green electrical volts box. Electrical hey, everybody box knew where the box was <laughs> You know what I mean, I'll meet you at the box. That was a table, a chair, a base, a heater, 
Shit, that shit was a heater during the winter time. I, I mean, I just I I feel like how did how how in the world did we come from that? Not just maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. And now if I lose my phone, my whole life is over. Like I can't call nobody. I can't even log in for work if my phone is not working. Like that's some bullshit. I think I was one of the last people much of our age group to get rid of my handwritten phone book. I kept a little phone book with numbers in it for hell long, even after having a cell phone. <laughs> and then one day I finally let it go. <laughs> Who you give your black book to, Tommy? <laughs> uh, hey. I didn't give it back to the streets. I, I that thing, that thing had a, hey, that thing had to disappear like one of them self destruction messages. <laughs> this phone book would dis- would destru- self destruct in five, four, three. Hey. Oh, but part no, of that problem that. is we don't remember we don't remember phone numbers no more. Mm-mm. We don't memorize phone numbers. People don't even people talk. Fuck with? People don't even talk to each other the same. Like you remember, even not even like when you was a little kid. But say, for instance, like Thursday night market. I just read a comment on on the um, YouTube from Sean. She was like, "Yeah, remember we need to bring Thursday night market back." I was just thinking about Thursday night market like two days ago. I'm still scared of big ass horses, but but see, we can't do shit out here like that because. Why? Yep, these youngsters be fucking it up for everybody, man. All they want to do is shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Bang, bang, bang. That's all they want to do. Ain't no yep. questions. Ain't it don't even be no real beef. <laughs> like back in the day, you actually had that beef to wanna uh, take somebody out. Like ain't even yeah, no real beef. You, it just, at Thursday oh. night market, you you'll see a fight before you see somebody get shot at Thursday night market. Yeah, like, nowadays, yeah. nowadays everything gets shot up. Shit, they just had think about Think about three areas of the town you never expected to hear about shooting. Elk Grove. When you was here. In the, <laughs> in the three sub city neighborhoods, you would never expect to hear shit happening. I would never expect to hear people getting shot in, in Laguna. <laughs> or mother. I don't know. Shit, now actually, nothing surprises me. Actually. Right, think about it. Folsom would come to mind. Roseville. They just had. Two shootings back to back in Roseville. Somebody shot up in in Kaiser, <laughs> and uh, and then like a couple of days ago, somebody had a shootout with the CHP in Roseville. In Roseville, well, they don't like in black Roseville. People. In Roseville. Wow. It ain't safe nowhere, man. It ain't safe nowhere. Now, do you th- do you think that that's Sacramento, or do you think that's just a change of the times and the way uh, the energy I, of the I, world is going right now? I think a lot of people going a, crazy. A lot of us energy of the world. I mean, guns is a problem everywhere. I mean, it ain't just black people. You know, yeah, guns is easily accessible, and since nobody knows how to communicate, I'm just gonna shoot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, and then the drugs is different out here. People be on one. Man, these drugs out here ain't no joke. Man, back in the day, you used to hear people overdosing on heroin or something like that. People overdosing on kinds of shit. <laughs> people overdosing that fentanyl, boy. That every day. Yeah, that shit's <laughs> scary. I mean, if if I was a drug user, I probably wouldn't be using no more fucking drugs because this is too many people dying off of accidental fentanyl. Like, how is it accidental? Because People mixing that shit into shit and not telling people about it. Right. That's, should that's be not cool. Should be laced, laced and mixed and you ain't knowing. You think you're taking a regular party drug and boom, you don't wake up. And now I'm going to keep it 100 with everybody. I've had my party days. I went to San Diego State. I went to San Diego State for a reason. But would I will be hell no I would not repeat that shit in these times I would not because I would be too scared and popping and fizzing back then shit you would have thought more people was old dear but motherfuckers wasn't so I don't know you call it devious with it with mixing it with deadly shit or what but I didn't hear about people fucking dying off ecstasy But 
yeah, no, it's crazy. I um, Girls, people not knowing how to communicate. You know what I mean? Different world out here in general, not just you know California here, just everywhere. Everywhere. I think we I are think... already uh, way past the average of mass ships in the country already, and we only in April. Right. I would hate to say, like, I felt like COVID was beneficial for me in my life, but I think for a lot of people, it really brought to head a lot of, like, mental illness and shit they need to deal with, and they still haven't recovered, or they still getting worse at this point. Because shit ain't getting better in the world. I don't even it's think it's that. My thing is, I don't even think that mental illness is worse. I just think the attention to it is higher, because it's always been there, and the help ain't really been there. It's just now everybody's more aware, so it's an easy thing to point at now. We used to just say, oh, that motherfucker crazy. Now it's like, oh, that motherfucker got some mental health issues. But there's not enough help out there. There's not enough resources. There's not enough money. Uh, nobody gives a shit. You know, people are quick to write you off. And then easily with mental health comes the drugs. You know what I mean? You're already depressed and fucked up in the head. It's easy to start using shit. Yeah, and, and the prescription drugs. There, now you hooked on that. The prescription drugs is the worst one. No better. But he's, those are the ones that. So that's now you hooked on drugs. Him. You know what I mean? You got mental illness. You hooked on drugs. Now you homeless. That adds to the homeless problem. You know what I mean? So it's just wild. It's wild. There's no easy answer neither. No. no easy answer. And I would hate to say this, but when I first started feeling like I need to go have therapy and shit, the first thing my first therapist ever said to me was, you know, you should just think about taking, you know, getting on some prescriptions. And I was just like, no, why is that the first thing y'all want to do? Because I probably already got an addictive behavior. I already told you I drink too much and I smoke weed every day. <laughs> So you gonna give me something else to fuel that with? Like, I just refuse. I'm so glad I stuck to it. Even though there were a couple of times when they almost talked me into it. Like, you know, it may not just be this. It may be a really bad chemical imbalance in your brain and drugs help to stabilize and balance that and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, nah, I know me. I know if you give me something, if it makes me feel some type of way, I'll I'll do it more than I should. So I think I avoid I dodged a big bullet and I definitely have healed without medication. It's hard work, but shit. I still ain't popping no opioids and all that shit. Because there's a lot of them out here. Like, you know what I mean? Back in my 20s and 30s, I was always in the club. I was all the little clubs. Uh, 815L, uh, <laughs> Coconut Grove, Cafe New Orleans, Avalon. <laughs> I'm tra- I was drinking, but I don't even drink that much no more. I got more alcohol in the house. <laughs> I can throw a party any day of the week. I just don't drink that much no more. It ain't fun no more. I mean, I like my liver. Niggas getting old. That's drinker. what it I'll is. I'll drink at an event. I'll drink at an event. But I know some old people that drink. You know what I mean? They drink, oh, drink. I They'll know some old people that I drink just, all day. I just, all day. I can't ain't do for that. me no more. Like, I'll drink a little bit, but I ain't, I ain't doing double fisted like I used to be. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it ain't the same. It ain't the same. You get older, you make different decisions for yourself, so. I mean, that, and you drink different, too. I mean, when you was younger, you yeah. drink anything poor. You know, when you're older, yeah. you got a little more taste. You drink something that costs a little more. You know what I'm saying? Even if you have a glass of whiskey, you ain't, it, it you have a glass. You ain't having five. You know what I mean? You like, ain't taking so, shots. <laughs> it's, it's a difference. You know what I mean? really. I really. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you live and you learn. Whether you was using recreational uh, drugs or drinking or doing whatever else. We older now. We done made better decisions for ourselves. You know what I, mean? I don't like being older now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just I love being old. old speech about, 
about feeling blessed to be the age you is. I know, I know. That's why I said I'm just kidding. I love being 41, even though motherfuckers still don't be thinking I'm 41. I'm blessed that I don't look 41, too. With all the drinking and partying I did, I can't believe it, but... Yeah, like, a, I mean, one... I know we know a lot of people that we've been lost around our age group to violence. And we mm-hmm. even know some people our age group we've lost due to health problems. Like one of the homies from Kennedy just passed away a few days ago. He was a artist, you know what I mean? Well-liked, respected member of our community. And he was having health issues and passed away, man. That broke a lot of people's heart because, you know, we only in our early 40s. <laughs> I feel like a <laughs> lot have passed in the last two or like three lives, years. Man. A lot of people our age have passed from health reasons in the last two or three years. Yeah, Too many. And, and as a fellow artist, rest in peace to that brother, because I know who you're talking about. So that was that shocked everybody because that was here today, going tomorrow type situation for real. Damn. I saw him post. He had just posted a video on Easter Day. He wasn't sick then, or anything. Or, or that morning, yeah. that early afternoon, he posted a video and then the next day he was gone. Damn. I mean, so that breaks my heart. Tomorrow ain't promise. I mean, I know cats in their 30s and 40s dying of heart attacks. I'm like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You never know. You never know. It's definitely, uh, I mean, I feel like I've lost more people to health than to anything, in the, like, as far as our age, like my friends, our age, our school, school age, that, that type of shit in the last three years. And not even to COVID. So it's just like, like you said, heart attacks, strokes, um, kidney problems, you know, stuff that you think, oh, that's an old person's per- problem. Like, you know, nah, that's a, you ain't taking care of your body type of problem. So that is definitely scary as hell. I think that was one of the biggest things I was like, Tricky, you can't. Keep drinking like you drinking and think you're gonna live long. You really drinking yourself to death, literally. But you know, I was drinking to cope with other shit, though. <laughs> yeah, shit. That's what that's where that staying busy come in though. Stay moving, stay doing something, keep yourself active, keep yourself distracted. So that way you ain't got time to just sit around and drink. Yeah. Find stuff to do. I mean, yeah. Hey, I was hell during COVID. I was hella adventurous. I traveled more during COVID than I've done any other year in my life. I was all over the place: Hawaii, Virgin Islands, <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> I was all over the place during COVID. It was cheaper, and there wasn't no lines because nobody else was traveling. So I was able to get it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was getting it in. They was begging people to catch a flight. Hey, please get on the plane. They uh, will. I mean, I did. I, I found I all kinds there. of stuff to do. I was on the river or on the lake every weekend. I had my little paddle, my little <laughs> stand-up paddle board. I had my kayak. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm just going to enjoy this nature. Since we can't go inside, I'm going to stay outside. I ain't going to lie. That's what the brother did do during the pandemic was stay on the water. Yeah, because one motherfucker had to get out the house. Shit. Yeah. That was like the only thing they wasn't like telling us we couldn't do. So it was like, shit, we in the water. (laughs) It's the only place you could see people. Okay, so is it weird that I really, I kind of wish we go back to those first, that first six months, not the first six months after the first six months of COVID, you know, when it kind of started to open up a little, little bit, but it was still like... People still being nice to each other, you know. It's like we're all in this together, and you know, <laughs> it was a lot of traffic on the road. I don't know. I worked during the whole COVID, so I didn't get to sit down like everybody else. Oh, did I? No, I worked. So there. I just it was my, just so just fucking my... peaceful, and people were just hey, so nice. I worked nice. a lot. I worked a lot, but I enjoyed Me my too. days off. <laughs> I worked a lot, but I enjoyed my days off. I was off. I was doing something. I wasn't about to sit up in the house. <laughs> no, I never did. I that was the most I was outside for sure. But it was just because My it daughter, was easier. Go ahead. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, my daughter was one years old, and she got to see, you know what I mean, all the places I went. She went. She was in Hawaii. She was in the Virgin Islands. She, my daughter traveled more places before she could talk than I did my whole childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter been more places than I've been. I'm 41 years old. Right. Shit. That's dope, though. Yeah, it was. I, I both was you, okay, so both that. you guys have daughters. Do you... You fear for your daughters growing up in this kind of climate? No, nah, I don't fear for it. I mean, you know, you, I'm worried because there's going to be things that happen that I have no control over. But I'm not going to live in fear. False evidence appearing to be real. I'm not going. I'm not going to live in fear of shit that. Hopefully, you know, what I mean, she takes the lessons that I try to give her, and she's observant and intelligent enough to keep herself out of certain situations or lean on her support circle for shit that she don't know the answers to. You know what I mean? And live life kind of, you know, the way. Other yeah, I'm... Shit, but I do hope she goes through some adversity. I mean, you ain't gonna learn shit if you don't go through no adversity. So, right. as long as I'm healthy and I'm, ever, and, I'm, and I'm within reach, you know I mean, I always be here to, I call it RET. I create a little acronym, you know what I mean? Respect, educate, and protect. I will respect, educate, and protect my daughter until my dying days. You know what I mean? So that's the same. Mm. D, your daughter's in college, right? Nah, she graduated already. She uh she already out here living her oh. life and doing her thing. So congratulations. That's uh Damn. I, 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 Yeah, you she, are. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations you to her. She she oh, yeah. already graduated. Why do why do I think she just went to college? Nope, she graduated with honors, all the stuff. I knew Kennedy you know was a smart girl. She's been a smart girl for as long as I know her. Oh yeah. I mean, she was always been focused. You know what I mean? That's that's the whole thing. You, you, you give them the guidance to to chase their dreams, but you, you you give them the discipline so they stay focused. And as long as they get that and run with that, they'll be fine. Just like we were, you know what I mean? I can't say just like we were because I mean I didn't grow up with my father and I would I know a lot of things would have went differently for me in life had I grown up with my father or grown up mm. with a father figure. Right. But I just I don't know if people understand how important it is for girls to have fathers just as much as it is for young men to have fathers in their lives. It's just as important. Because oh, yeah. I think a lot of the mistakes that I've made in even in my adulthood to this very day come from me not having that relationship with a, a man who could teach me what it is that a man should act like or, you know, how a man should respect you or what you should allow or not allow in certain, certain certain circumstances. So all of my things have been through trial and error. Even though I have a slight, I have a relationship with my dad now, it's not like the normal father-daughter type shit, but it's there to, a, to an extent. I still don't have that, you know, that which you guys say you are for your daughters. But, you know, mm. it, it is what it is. Like, you know, at some point, somebody got to stop the cycle of what it was, you know what I mean? And uh, I've been fortunate enough to know a lot of strong Black brothers that is high, that are highly involved in these daughters' lives in our generation that we didn't necessarily have that same, you know what I mean, support system when we was kids. So it's a beautiful thing for me to see a lot more of that now than I did as a kid because I can't even name a friend I grew up with that had both their parents in their house or even in their life. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Most of my boys, it was it was moms only. <laughs> I think right. only one, only one cat had his dad, and one cat had a stepdad that was solid. The rest, you know I mean, me, most of my friends are highly involved in their children's lives. You know what I mean? So it's a good thing. That's definitely a blessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned one thing from one cat that I'm, you know, that I plan to instill as we go, and he was like, uh. And he, he learned it from a celebrity that talked about it. He said, you got to date your daughters. He said, I'm not mean. He, I don't mean that in some freaky, nasty way. He's like, you got to show them how they should be appreciated, how they should be loved, how they should be treated. 
how they should be respected. Take them out. Do things with them. Open their doors. Show them mm-hmm. that that's not a prize when a dude opens your door. That's an expect- mm-hmm. expectation. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Show them the way a lady should be treated and a lady should be acting. A man should treat a lady. That way, they ain't running around goofy for these dumbass dudes out here <laughs> falling into them dumb traps. Right, because they know my daddy didn't do my daddy don't treat me like that, so I can't let you treat me like that. Because if she looks up to her daddy, besides whatever religious belief they have, God, Jesus, Allah, whatever they believe in, if those are the two highest beings of men in your life, then it's very hard for some riffraff dude to just come in, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And take, you know, and take away from her, so... Hey, but you know what, though? It is that, but it's a little deeper than that, too. You guys, oh, yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. No, we, we ain't gonna unpeel all them layers today, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I was gonna say, because you know, one thing I will say just to briefly, our, our, our kids, they're like the first generation of kids, of black kids here in America who actually get to live without the pressure that we grew up with. Like, mm-hmm. they got the same starting point. They got the same opportunity. They got the same understanding. They got the same expectation. And at this point, if somebody tried to hate on them, that person is going to be the the villain more so than than they are. So uh, these kids really got a chance to just like show out. Like they get to really show who they are and and what they can do. And that's and 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 that's that's the dope part. And that's the dope part about having all these dads around now. It's because these dads get to instill that that structure, and so these, I just think these kids. I mean, I just think these kids gonna grow up to be great. Personally, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, my daughter, she she impressed me. She graduated college, you know what I mean, four years straight. She didn't take no time off, none of that. She just did it. Yeah, you know I mean, like, I'm like that's that's what's up. You know what I mean, like. Congratulations. Not, and I, see, I see a lot of kids doing that though. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 more commonplace now than it's ever been. It's almost it's almost uh an expectation now more so than it is a surprise. I think they have a lot more freedom to 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 be themselves, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all, they their parents, you know, grew up in a whole different way. And you've seen the world change in such a big way from when we were kids to now. Like, I think our gender, our, you know, our age group, we've seen some of the biggest changes in the fucking world in the last 40 years. And so. Correct. Not to interrupt you real quick. I just want to apologize. I'm going to go off. Uh, I'll be listening, but I'm going to go off camera for a second because uh, my brother's on his way to make this overtime money, but I wasn't going to miss this show tonight. So I'm. <laughs> All the movement y'all see in the background was me getting ready to get up out the door, and now I'm about to grab some food, but uh, I'm still here, but just I'm going to check out for a second, all right? All right, for sure, no worries. But yeah, no, the, I, I feel like, you know, wait, I forget to ask you, D, what did Kennedy go to school for? She went to school for, uh, it changed like twice, so let me get it right. Um, I believe it's political studies. Um, don't let me get it wrong because you know, <laughs> political science. But she did. We went to school nah, it's the not, same thing. It's, 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 it, it might be political science, but I think it's more like political studies. Like she, uh, she like really took an emphasis on like feminism and um, and and world structure and world politics and and kind of being able to. Um, Take on, take on jobs more so in like a um, like activism. Yeah, yeah. Is she working right now? No, She's I, currently not. It's I know some people out there who are really into the activism stuff. If she wants some connections to what's how to like what's some people to get started with. But she's in she's in Atlanta, so. Oh, I thought you said she was in SAC. Oh. Uh, 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 nope. She graduated from Orange County, and then when she finished there, she went to Atlanta, and that's oh, where she decided to plant her roots at. So, have you been down there to see her? No, she's come out. She's come home several times, but I have not been to Atlanta. 
Yeah. The way my work schedule has been set up, I have not have time to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. How is work been? Oh, uh, you know, we working. We still got the house. That's all that matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, is that that's your own business, right? Sometimes, I mean, I got I work with my brother on certain things, mm-hmm. and then certain things I work on my own business. So, I mean, but we got a kind of a family affair going on. That's what's up, though. I saw the work you did at Sheena's house, and I saw her get her fence before you fix it, because I was at her house like a couple weeks before that. I was like, oh, yeah, he did some work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hooked them up. I mean, it was cool. A lot of a lot of customers have been happy with what they're getting, so we just try to make sure everybody uh gets something affordable. You know what I mean? We ain't trying to rape them. You know, I mean, I'm trying to make money, but I ain't trying to get rich off you, so you know, I just uh, work it hard working to make sure everybody win. Can't That's be mad it. at that. You know what I mean? No, you can't because your blessings don't come. And you, ain't oh, gotta, yeah. you know, you got to break the next person to get them. They come to you. You attract abundance. My blessings already here. I just told you my daughter graduated college four years straight and didn't have no problems. <laughs> so my blessings already happened. <laughs> Your blessings already happening. I mean, yeah. I can't believe that she's already graduated. Well, I mm. guess I can because Jennifer's son, Levon, is going to graduate in May. See what I'm saying? He probably went four years straight. I'm just like, wow. Like, it's crazy. All of these babies that I used to hold is now grown and walk around talking about they going out and drinking and graduating college and things. It's like, wow. Yep, my I just baby don't feel shit. like I'm as old as like my mom was when I was that age, you know? And, and believe me, you're not. I mean, your soul is, is younger. That's why you're in a different stuff. So yeah. just keep vibing to the universe. It's there for you. Yeah, I feel that. Hey, don't mean to break that. it up, y'all, but uh we got some we got someone in the chat on the YouTube chat. What's up? Who is it? Nine one six Shan Chan. Oh, that's 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 his wife. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to her. I was, that's who I, I saw. She told us the blue lamp when we were trying to figure out what the other bar was. Thank you, though, Roselle, because I do be forgetting to check the chat sometimes. Um, <laughs> a lot of times. Most of the time, it don't be nobody in there, really. But sometimes it be in there popping. I just be like, damn, we missed the whole conversation. But <laughs> just be vibing. Um, hey, you can't. You can't be mad at the people in the chat. You got to uh, shout them out once in a while. Like, hey, what's up with yeah, the chat? Yeah, no, that's what I say. <laughs> I got to get better at that. Because, you know, they they keep this shit going, too. People watching. And I was, you know, I get to getting into my conversations and I forget. You know, there's people watching, not just the people that I'm talking to as well. So just to be mindful of things, but. It is what it is. I think I'm actually going to be going to Atlanta this summer. Now that he mentioned Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Which what's way? in Atlanta? Well, Monica. Oh, shit. It's Monica's birthday. Today. Happy birthday, Monica Valentine. If you are watching the show today, she watches sometimes. I don't know if she's watching today. But happy birthday, Mama. Um... Want to go see her and you and Shanti's out there. Okay. Well, happy birthday to Monica. And what up to Shanti? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shanti watches sometimes too, you know. It's okay, good to okay. have your, your friends that support you, whether you know people know it or not. Always a blessing. You know what I mean? It start with your friends and they tell a friend and more friends and more people come from there. That's how you grow. <laughs> so you said you almost done. You're, you're almost ready to release your project. Have you did any visuals yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, almost is a stretch. I'm still I'm still working, but plan is to be done working sometime this summer. Um, 
So no, nah, like I said, I've done I've just done a few shows here and there, testing some songs out, and uh, you know, so I know which ones are vibing, which ones is push first, and then just gotta keep creating. Like I said, I gotta got a few songs I did out in LA that I'm real happy with. Now I just gotta do some songs out here, and you know, kind of keep my vision together, uh, having both sounds on the album. Yeah, so. Who you got on the album? Oh, right now? Uh, mm -hmm. I got Lisa Love on there. I got Master C on there. Uh, Master C, he's uh, part of the Living Legend crew out there in L.A. Uh, I got Carte Blanche on the album. I got The Gatlin on the album. Uh, that's Yeah, I got a couple people on there. You know what I mean? It's, like I said, it's going to be nice. Well, I definitely can't wait to hear it. I mean, I feel like it's been a while since you put something out. Out. Oh yeah, it's been a, it's been a good while, but I mean, you know, you know how life goes. You know, music is fun; it's great to create. But you know, when you get working and you find something that's making life happen, you stick to it. So, I've been on that hustle more than anything else. Right. Nah, not mad at that dog. Hey, you can't be, man. You gotta, you gotta, like I said, you gotta stick to what will put the food on the table. So, I mean, if you'd have asked me when we when we first linked back up, if you'd have asked me back then that I think I would be a contractor, my answer would, I would have laughed because I'd have been like, nope, I'm never doing construction again because <laughs> I worked hella hard to get away from construction and just to come back. So, and what what brought it you back to it? The pandemic. Mm. Then I was working from home, still doing because I was doing the medical stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this anymore." It was <laughs> just monotonous. Yeah. So. That's why I said a pandemic. It did wonders. For, it did doozies for me, for sure. Oh uh, yeah. I got fired. I got laid off during the pandemic. I mean, I worked halfway through it, then got laid off. So I got, got a taste of it, but I was still was back to work within a few months. That's why when everybody was like, it's hard. And at that, I didn't want to go back to work for nobody, but I just couldn't figure out what my niche was. Like, I felt like everybody around me was finding something to do as their own business. Like, Oh, I'm about to start a business doing this. I'm about to start doing this. And it was popping for everybody. But I was like, I don't have anything that I can <laughs> think of to make a business out of. So then you made a podcast. So now you got to do is keep going so you can get a sponsor. And once you get your first sponsor, you're going to get your second sponsor and it's going to grow from there. Speak it. That's what I've been writing down. I've been claiming it. I mean, it's happening. I think my next show. I'm not even going to say I think. I know. I've already confirmed it with them and everything goes well. The, the I'm going to have the producers from... Somebody in there. Oh, you going to get back? Oh, your daughter. Uh, James? That's you, D. <laughs> that was her. Uh, oh. Okay. Know. Well... I'm gonna have some producers on. They um they producing right now. They're producing RBX's new um, project. Okay. And they just finished producing Fat Lip with Far Side's album. So kind of came across them at a festival I was working last year and just networked it and they agreed to come on. So I mean, you know, little by little. Okay. So question. Since you brought that up. How do you feel about all these original hip hop artists still being able to make hot music uh, in today's day and age? Like we kind of touched on it earlier, but I mean, like it's just amazing to see Too Short and freaking Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg and E40 and the group and a album actually like slap harder than some of these youngsters. Like it's just it's it's wild to me. I think it's crazy because these niggas is in their 50s. 
<laughs> you know what it reminds me of is, is on Five Heartbeats when they be at the end, they're like, they in their 30s, but we're in our 40s. <laughs> but <laughs> that's legit what it is. And I can't tell you no new artist name because I haven't listened to all the old artists. The old, no, I won't call them old. The OG artists who be put, who putting out new shit every week or be featuring on somebody's shit every week. And like you said, they got an album out. And that shit is, I think it's selling. It's like it was the hit number one, at least. But shit, I ain't gonna lie. These things be on, be on TV all day, every day. It's just amazing to see that they came from NWA and Crippin' and shit murder cases and now they they where they at and they still where they at they've been there solid for all this did time I, did i ain't gonna lie it's it's a lot of young cats i fuck with i i think hella talented got some shit like i might not agree with everything they're doing to promote themselves or that they put on cat or that they come from comfortable enough to put on camera but yeah i mean some of the little shit like that nigga, that little rapper uh little baby he go crazy to me i like dude you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. I'm familiar with yeah, some I mean, of them. Uh, and uh, now, don't ask me to name like more than two songs. You feel me? But <laughs> that, that ain't the point. You know what I mean? Like, I just, you know what I mean? Uh, I like the uh, the little dude out of LA. Uh, I, I can't think of his name. I'm drawing a blank, but I know his song is uh, I Wish I Knew Better. Little R&B cat, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I wish like, I knew a little better. Yeah, better. Cool. yeah, yeah. Like, he's talented. And he plays instruments and everything. You feel me? I I love her. You know what I'm saying? I still okay. consider her a new artist. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting on LMA to drop a second project. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's, it's a lot of great talent out there that uh, is still pushing this new, this, this young age music agenda. We just got to kind of swim through a lot of other stuff to get to it. Now, mm-hmm. if if you're only listening to like trap music, then yeah, you're gonna get bored pretty quick because you know it's a lot of redundancy, but it's a lot of good RB out there, it's a lot of good hip hop backpack rappers like it's even mm-hmm. J. Cole hey, still dropping some good stuff. J. Cole, Lucas Joyner, they still, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you got some, I actually what's her name? Old girl that won the championship with LSU. She got some flows, man. I've been yeah, listening. Yeah, Flaze. Yeah, she she got she got it. I heard she was supposed to be doing a collab with Lil Wayne. Yeah, oh. she hot. She she signed to Rock Nation. Like she hot. You feel me? So that's cool. And see, now I've been listening to more. Uh, you know, my my on my own other shit. You know, not neo soul, but not R and B. Just other shit. <laughs> right. Right. Just because I don't, I, I don't vibe with the trap shit no more. <laughs> like a good beat only lasts me a good two step. One, two, and then you know I'm I'm trying to hear what you're trying to say. Other than that, I really don't have nothing for you. But I try to find new music. It's just it's so saturated now that it's hard to go to know where to go to find new music. Yeah, because just everybody can put something on a streaming platform, even somebody with one follower. You know what I mean? So. Oh. There's just so, so much music out there, so many artists out there. It's just more about what do you want to hear? Like, what what type of topics are you into hearing about? Biggest thing, because it's not like they 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 reinvent talking about nothing we ain't heard about. It's just the way they deliver it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the biggest difference. I mean, if you look at most of our hip hop, that shit was all derived from other shit and created a new genre. You know what I mean? Think about all the beats. It ain't like there's a whole lot of original beats on a lot of our classic songs. Them was beats from songs back in the 50s and 60s and 70s that they used, you know what I mean? So, And now right. they're getting used again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, hey, so look, so here's the difference, though. So, and I'm glad you said that. So here's the difference. When we were kids, we had no idea what them songs was from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know what I'm saying? So all oh, that was new music to us. And right. and our parents and grandparents would laugh at us. Now, yeah. when these kids are are sampling songs from the '80s, <laughs> we're like, because again, the '80s is 43 years ago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're like, what are y'all doing? This hey, how y'all gonna sample this? Man, this song only came out. No, <laughs> the dude, that song came out in '83. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like it's it's hitting us different because now. 
hip hop fans are older. Mm-hmm. So we got a longer stretch of songs we recognize. So now we really mad because they really messing up classics. Like when they tried to redo House Party, you like, whether you liked it or not, it rubbed you the wrong way because you like, how y'all gonna do redo House Party? Not knowing if you saw a kid right now and you saw a kid back then and held a picture side by side, you wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> no, don't know nothing about what happened at House Party for real. <laughs> it's a I can't even stress. tell you who played kid in the new movie. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't even know it really came out. So I didn't even like the new coming to America. I'm like, it's not even on the same base as the first one. Like in they, they made it too family it. friendly funny. The other one was like funny oh, but she's... realistic. Hey, was like, funny. They tried hella hard to make it funny. I'm like, it was too much. But you like, know, think about think about what you could get away with in the eighties with comedy versus now. Yeah, true that too. You know what I'm saying? You, like, think too. about that. The main joke was the royal penis is clean, my honey. Yeah, I you still use that line. Look, look, look. <laughs> you can get away with a lot of sexual shit in movies. You can get away with that shit. You just can't get away with the shit that they were saying that was on the, the talking about the sexuality type of stuff. Like, you 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 can get you can get away with some sexual stuff, but if you have too much heterosexual stuff on there, it, it, it's hetero. a problem. Too yeah. much hetero. That's we couldn't even get away. The, the Jeffersons couldn't even get away with that shit these days on that show. <laughs> Archie, Archie Bunker and them wouldn't last two days on TV nowadays. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just a different world, man. Very Crazy. I was watching fucking Martin reruns. I'm like, I can't believe they let this shit slide. But I still miss the days when you used to sit at the house watching the jukebox, hoping somebody order a damn song because you know better than to order no damn song on your mama's cable because you get your ass <laughs> whooped when she got home. I was waiting for somebody <laughs> to order that Luke or that Two Live Crew. Me so hard. <laughs> I was waiting. I'm like, oh, I know the number. They about to put in that 298. That's me so horny. That's coming on. Wow. Speaking of, who's looking forward to catching that uh, Freak Nick documentary? <laughs> I haven't seen it. Where is it on? What is it on? I don't think it's out yet. I think it's coming. They're putting it out. The Freak Nick is documentary. Is it like going to go into theaters or what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what platform is coming out. They, 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 they need to burn that, though. <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking. They say that, right? But if you think about it, a lot of the free things back in the day, there was no drama. It was no fighting. I mean, there was some. I mean, it had to be. You know what I mean? But but it wasn't like what, if we tried to do that today's age, what would happen? It's like, yeah, a lot of, I'm sure they ain't putting like everything on tape because I don't know whose documentary it is. But we ain't worried about us. It ain't us that was out there. We was too young. But we going to see somebody's aunties and grandmamas <laughs> nah, some of y'all, some of y'all gonna yeah. see y'all big sisters and your older cousins out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? You gonna see? Hey, hey, hey you know they were still freak nicking in '96. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. They, they were still bit. freak nicking in '96. So I ain't gonna lie, I was just trying to go to freak nick. I was just too young. Then no even if we come out '96, that was almost. <laughs> How many years ago was that? You know what I mean? I don't think that's that was almost 30 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. you know what I mean? We we <laughs> older older sister cousin, they old as hell, they almost 60 now. <laughs> hey, hey. You about to go in the bank and be like, do I recognize you? <laughs> <laughs> You was on Big Nick 93. I see you. Hey, you know the cool part is most people probably won't even recognize a lot of people because think about the difference in fashion from then and now. You won't even recognize some of them people. <laughs> Man, yeah, shit. Right. Hey, don't believe that. Some some people got the same face they had since they came out the womb. Hey, you, what I say, crack black don't crack unless you use crack. Yeah, right. I say it all the time. Whitney Houston shows you. I mean. I've been to All Star Weekend in Vegas. I, that's enough for me to know I couldn't have handled Freak Nick and I and I left. That was crazy. I was out there, so I definitely second that motion because Vegas that was, that was enough never to scare me going to any Freak Nick ever in my life. 
Vegas said they will never host another NBA All-Star Weekend ever, and they haven't since, and that was like 2006. And they will not, because niggas is out there acting ridiculous. They, they will never host it. Again. They probably scared to host a parade if your Raiders ever won. <laughs> hey, they, hey, if they do that, I'm going. Hey, um, there's going to be people at the parade that ain't even Raiders fans. <laughs> They're like, hey, we're going to Vegas for that parade. It's going to be cracking. <laughs> <laughs> you know they would. This shit would be. I, I don't think, I don't know if I would be able to go. <laughs> I'm going. Go I'm, taking I'm taking off. I'm taking off work. Uh, me and my wife, we going with it, babe. Let's go. We going out yeah, there. Yeah, you better be ready to time. shoot a nigga for her because this is dangerous out there for women. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's gonna be dangerous for her shit. We, hey, we've been to, we've been to the Pro Bowl. We've been to Raider Nation in in Florida. Like we've been to Raider Nation in a few spots. We we we, we go kick it. She fit I'm right not in. Talking about being in Raider Nation, Daryl. I'm just talking about being in a place where people. Don't feel like they they got no rules like Vegas. Niggas oh, feel yeah, like they can do whatever the fuck they want in Vegas. Niggas is literally grabbing me while I'm walking with my nigga. They grabbing me on my other side. Disrespectful. Yeah, the we, whole yeah, time. We, so it yeah, was crazy. Know. Yeah, we know how to handle ourselves. Believe me, and we ain't gonna be by ourselves anyway, so we be fine. Yeah, but that, I don't know. Raiders, I, I hope the Raiders. I, mean, I don't think together. you would get to the same level as All Star. Remember, All Star Weekend had everybody from every corner of the earth. And it was like, it was like different areas was taking up different blocks. You walked through, you knew where the LA cats was at, you knew where the Bay Area cats was at, you knew where the cats from out of town from Texas you was at. You knew where Sack was at, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Sack had a block. I was like, how does Sack have a block in Las Vegas? I know all y'all niggas right here. It was wild, man. It was wild. I literally Hey, Sack Sack move around. Hey, believe that. Sack move around. You would have thought Sack, it was Sack shit. I literally walked from from Caesar, not Caesar, shit. I walked from Circus Circus to the MGM Grand. I walked. <laughs> I did too. You know, I, it's, it's not I'm that like, bad when they tell the people out there, though. <laughs> yeah, it took the whole night, but we was moving because everywhere we, every corner we stopped on, something was going down. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> the cold part is I walked it faster than my partner was able to drive it. That's how many people was out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was bananas, man. It was bananas. Yeah, that is crazy. I kind of do want to, um, I do still want to go to a Raider game, but, you know. You should have went to that Raider 90 game and we got up in that thing. Y'all tried <laughs> a very valiant effort to do something when you had to crush your hearts at the very end and let y'all know where y'all really stand. You know what I mean? Oh, valiant effort, huh? Yeah. That, it was that a valiant effort. Y'all almost beat us. Y'all almost beat us. Y'all almost beat us. You know what I mean? You got close. You got close. You got close. You're too close to comfort. <laughs> Almost doesn't count. <laughs> you talk to all Raider fans right now. Dean's a Raider fan. I'm a Raider fan. I'm a Raider fan. You're the only Raider fan on here right now, which is very rare. That's fine. That's fine. And that's fine. And I'll be that because that's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be that. But you know, it was a good game, though. It was enjoyable to watch. It was good. And the thing is, it ain't the same rivalry it used to be. The energy was totally different. If, if none of y'all been to a game in that stadium yet, it's not the same energy it used to As be. In it's, not, it's not the same energy. I mean, I'm sure there's a section where it might feel like that, but, like, there wasn't no, like, crazy disrespectful shit talking. It was just, like, yeah. regular shit talking. It no. was like, it was cool. It was enjoyable. I like that. I like I like yeah. Oakland Coliseum shit talking. You gotta think about it. Most of the fans is going to most of the games. They probably live in SoCal, and that's a different vibe because they not from up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that yeah. hate was Bay Area Niners versus Raider hate. It was yeah. like LA and LA and Niners ain't decent. LA is Niner. We don't play each other enough for that to be a crazy beat. <laughs> LA, the LA got so many damn teams coming and going. They don't know who they fucking beefing with. All right, and that's on me. Like it wasn't, it wasn't no like beef like that because we don't beef with them like that. So it wasn't the same energy. And then it'd be hella people in Vegas that are from other states that just go to games to go to game out there. They're not a fan yeah. of either team. 
Like they had hella stars in the crowd, <laughs> like celebrities, artists, you know what I mean? Uh, actors and actresses. And they all wearing Raider gear because they got cop tickets to the game to show up. And they gave them Raider shit to put on. I'm like, ain't no way that motherfucker from Atlanta Raider fan. I saw him in Atlanta gear last time. You know what I mean? But because they hosted them, they, you know, they repping for the, for the place. It, it, it put seats in, you know, people in the seats and makes it a good time. But I'm like, there ain't no damn Raider fan. Y'all just putting stars in any jersey just so they can say they was here and shit. Oh, for sure. All for sure. Well, it was it was hella people. That was that was hella people wearing non Raider or Niner jerseys. Like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell a Chargers fan doing at this game? <laughs> Looking for a home. They so lost. Oh yeah, Bless you know heart. people do that a lot though. Going to these games wearing their uh, home team jerseys. I mean, you see, you'll see a few, but like there was a lot of people just wearing other stuff. I'm like, that's crazy. I believe it. I ain't been to a Vegas Stadium yet. It's nice though. I hey, it's nice. They did they did a good job with that thing. That place was nice. The seats were comfortable. It was it was nice. The food sucks there though. I can't give them no. I can't give them a good grade on the on the concessions. But <laughs> the, the stadium, the stadium itself was cool. It, it, was, it was comfortable <laughs> to watch a game. They can retract the roof or close it up. You know what I mean? So. You ain't got to worry about the weather. It, it was nice. It was nice. It's a nice stadium. They got a nice stage for performances. It was nice. It was, it was dope. I'm Super Bowl going to be there next year, right? I think it is. I think it is. Really? Mm. I mean, I'm not tickets. trying to go to the game, but I might go. Get your, to get your tickets you. now. <laughs> that might be doable. Well, if it's anything like the Kings, put your five grand aside now. <laughs> what? Hey, these oh, the King, the King, the King tickets is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's two. It's it's double the price of Game Three in San Francisco. I never thought something would be cheaper in San Francisco than in Sac. <laughs> that part. That's that's the crazy wait, part. Wait, wait, wait. The Kings tickets are. More expensive than oh, yeah, because think about it the Kings ain't been in the playoffs since 2006, man. So, you got season ticket holders, they they driving the prices up. It's some people ain't seen before, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, half the people going, you know, unless they you know a little bit older than us, we was we was we was youngsters, we was in our 20s, early 20s when last time the Kings made the playoffs. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 16 years ago. <laughs> Mitch Richmond? Or is that after Mitch Richmond? Oh, that was Chris Weber and them. Come on, oh, man. Oh, BB and them. Okay. Okay. BB and, and Tasia and Brad Miller. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. When the Lakers stole shit. <laughs> well, that was a little bit early in 06. 06 was the last time they made the playoffs, but. That uh, run for the title that they got fell short of. That was with Lottie Devox still on the squad. Is Lottie Devox still alive? He got to be yeah. pushing 200. Nah, he was a president. Of, he was a wannabe ass, weak ass GM for the Kings. The reason why they stuck for all these years because his ass can't evaluate talent to save his life. But uh, but he gone. They they pushed his ass out. Now they got a cat that actually know what he's doing and building a roster. Yeah, I mean, I ain't my number one team, but like I said, I support them and follow because it's my city, so I gotta know what's going on. But now nah, right. they doing, they making some good moves. They doing the right, they doing it the right way now. Got the right draft picks, you know what I mean? And uh, so they're doing it right. Well, I wish the best for them. You know, I like you said, hey, the number body. one team, but I know diehard fans like like Daryl. Like my brother, like there's people who be rocking their shit even when they was losing. I respect them motherfuckers. Now all these pop up all of a sudden King fans, I don't know where they came from. <laughs> Actually, the cold part though is even through these losing years though, a lot of the King fans have not been loyal to the soil even through the bad years. So I can't really say that. I mean, there's, there's always going to be some that pop up. This bandwagon is for every team across the country. Everyone. But for the, for the most... Like, there's still a lot of cats that are still repping the Kings even through the bad years. Like, even the games before they started winning, 
would still have some energy in there. They weren't always sold out, but there'll be some good energy in there. So, no, I went I to a few of them. Yeah. They still have good but, turnouts, but I mean, but like I you said, know. the tickets wasn't $5,000. Oh, yeah, no, nah, they was cheap as hell. See, you almost get free tickets as a game. I got free tickets every game I went to. <laughs> but the Warriors, man, I swear to God, I swear to God, before Curry and Thompson and Draymond and them star on that roll, I ain't know that many damn Warriors fans in Sacramento. I know, boy, I, I test them all. If you can't name the coach and the player, when the player choked out the coach, you wasn't no real damn Warriors fan. And PJ Carlissimo. PJ Carlissimo. It's PJ Carlissimo. If they can't say that, then you wasn't really no right. damn Warriors fan. Oh, Choked the shit out that nigga too. In the middle of practice. <laughs> PJ <laughs> Carlissimo <laughs> says something stupid yeah. to the trust free will. Trust free will walked away. <laughs> Car- he said, Carlos said it said, one more time. Screw up, turn around and choke his ass out. Hey, I shouldn't be laughing. They didn't, but... didn't have a Jason Richardson jersey. I don't want to hear. They didn't have a Baron Davis jersey. Hey, hey did you say a Jason Richardson jersey? <laughs> hey, for real, because he was a only all star for like 12 years. Hello, long. Balling. Hey, balling, balling, though. Balling. He was a baller. If you didn't have a Monte Ellis jersey, I don't want to hear it. Uh, the number 11, if you didn't have the 11. I don't have a Tim Hardaway jersey. Shit, don't say shit. The fuck? Yeah. Nah, he talking about the lean years, though. He said Monte Ellis, like, damn. Monte Ellis. If you got a Monte I Ellis jersey, all- you got all my respect as a Warriors fan. I didn't hear none of that energy back then. <laughs> right, that's when how I feel about Kings game. fans, though. I'm like, y'all don't remember Ty and Eddie. Ty and Eddie. Right. Ty and Eddie. I don't remember all those teams. Vernon Maxwell, John Barry. You know what I mean? Hey, I remember that team. Vernon Maxwell in the end of his career. John Barry with no hair. (laughs) John Barry. You know what I mean? Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley. Woo! Not the Bobby. What's, Bobby what's my other dude? What's, White what? chocolate Jason Williams. Jason uh, Williams. Jason White Williams. chocolate Jason Williams. Boy. That uh, started that new age of that kid. Yeah, that was, Jason Williams. He was the one before Bibby hey, got. Hey, Lawrence, Lawrence Thunderbird. Oh, <laughs> Lawrence Thunderbird. No. <laughs> Corliss Williams, Corliss Williams, right. Arkansas, Brian, baby. Brian uh, Grant, you know what I'm saying? Olden Polonese. Olden Polonese. These is real kings right here. You feel me? I need to, I need them to, I need them to bring them back for the playoff games. And sit they them on the front row. Like, hey, but they was kind of hard back then too. They just yeah, they was. They used to ball. They was hard back was then. Was hard. You feel me? They used to go in. They just couldn't get off of that playoff hunt. But That's where we at? But where for a minute? But oh, where we, we, we had hella little niggas that was balling. Yeah, we always had the short point right. guard. They had what? Not in the Kings in the Sacramento era, but shit. What it was the Royals? They had Oscar Robinson. <laughs> yeah, Oscar Robinson. <laughs> you know what I mean? They had some names. Nah, we had. Uh, <laughs> Reggie Pierce. <laughs> we had we had the big O Oscar Roberts too. Remember the big fat dude? Yeah, big O. Oh, uh, Oliver, uh, oh shit, some Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Dude. He looked like Man, a giant. Nice. He looked like a basketball. Hello. He looked, <laughs> he looked like a basketball version of Dante Culpepper. <laughs> he was. Hey, big remember when Danny Ainge used to play here? Oh shit! Yeah, he did for a minute. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. when. Yep, that's when Mark Reynolds used to be on the call. I know Mark Reynolds, but Jerry Reynolds, Jerry Reynolds used to be on the call. Well, oh, shit, Jerry, Jerry. Jerry. KJ was playing oh. shit still fucking. Kevin himself. Johnson, Jerry. the King. Yep. Yeah, KJ used for, to be at Oak Park Community Center every week. Before he went Who to the it? Suns. It's funny. So I was watching. Uh, what show was I watching? I was watching one of them debate shows. Oh. I think it's called uh, First Things First or whatever. One of the shows. 
and uh, it's on a uh, one on Fox Fox Sports Net, whatever that is, Fox Sports One, whatever. And they talking, and they were talking about the Kings. Now, all of a sudden, all these media, per- these sports media personalities, is talking about all oh, the series in the West to watch is the Kings Warriors. What was the energy all season? DeAndre <laughs> Fox was getting no love. Uh, uh, he's the most, uh, all he's just, season, they was hating. No, they the want to talk about the Lakers. Right. He's the most clutchest player in the NBA this year, based on statistics. Yep. I was like, he was getting no love. Like, he's probably the one of the all-stars that no, nobody know about because Kings only had, like, two nationally televised games the whole entire season. I but they the number, on TV. But the number three, but the number three seed in the West. I was like, that's disrespectful. But they talking about, oh, it's, it's going to be exciting to watch all of a sudden. But the same ones talking about that is on record talking about, oh, hell no, just because they got that trade with us a bonus, they ain't about to make no playoffs. I was like, <laughs> they got to eat crow now. They, they got to eat, eat a little bit of crow. Now. They got to eat some crow. But yeah, but you got it. Hey, but what they know, we we just started winning again. So I ain't mad Ooh. at them for not being on the train just now because, like, we ain't, like, we ain't proved it yet. We got to prove but it. Was and we... Team- it wasn't just winning. It was calling the Kings stupid for the trade. So why would you give away Halliburton for him? Everybody was talking about trying to get rid of Fox. Well, uh, that didn't uh, age well. That didn't age well because it looks like Fox's opponents is doing their thing. <laughs> hey, but <laughs> hey, I tell you what, that's why Monty Williams has his job, and that's why they talk about people who have Monty Williams' job. You feel <laughs> me? Like, we ain't worried about them. You know what I mean? The man did what he did, and we good with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he we gon we gonna handle that. I just I just know we 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 gotta get out this first round. We gotta beat the Warriors to really like put our stamp that we yeah, back. I mean I don't even think necessarily the Kings would have to win that series because that's still a tall task. Warriors are the defending champs. They do still have star power, they got hell experience, they got four rings, you know what I mean? That 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 core in that team got four rings. They not hella old. It's not like they they the old ass pistol. Nah, this, this is it though. Yeah. This is it. We need to go for it. We need to go four two against them, and this need to be the end of their run. And it's time if for it. They got really at least. Step up. Kings got at least. Kings just got at least win a game or two, or be competitive in every game. And, and even if they lost the series, ain't nobody gonna be mad because like it is. It's their first season back in the playoffs with a young yeah. ass team. So I think we are gonna win four games or two. I ain't gonna lie to you. Some reason I just feel it that. Ain't, it ain't bad. It ain't bad if they lose the series as long as they're competitive. Now if they get blown out by thirty every game, then yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a talk. But if they <laughs> hang in there and they're at least competitive, and it goes anywhere from five to six games, you know what I mean. And every game was competitive, they'll be all right, and they'll build on that because they still mm-hmm. missing one piece from really being like super solid, super what solid. They still one piece away. What you think that is though? I mean, one, they can use a little bit more on the bench. They need a defensive stopper. They don't have no defense. They got to have, like, somebody that can lock at least somebody down. You know what I mean? Like, Daniel Mitchell, he good, but he hella little. He too little. He's six feet. He ain't about to stop nobody on a regular basis. They need an enforcer. All your shots at the basket to help their defensive efficiency. They get that. And now they can really hang with some other squads. Because right now they all offense, no defense. And and out of all playoff teams, they got the worst defense. So, and we already know in the playoffs, it slows down a little bit. You game planning against teams. You got to be able to play some defense. So, I just think they a defensive stopper away from being a year contender if they keep that nucleus together. Because they got some so shooting. Should. They got good offense. They got ball movement. You know what I mean? They just don't have no defensive enforcer. So what you're saying is we should bring back Cousins. <laughs> hey, Hell no. Cousins, Cousins wasn't a defensive enforcer, though. He was a finesse player. Quiet as cat. Because he can't no, jump. Man. He didn't miss it. Like, he had the most blocked dunk attempts out of all centers because he can't jump. <laughs> he can't I'm jump. just saying, though. That's he's the best well, available, according to him. He's the third best center in the league right now. I think... If they would have did a move like what the Lakers did and got a couple of veterans that can play defense at least for a few minutes, like Lakers went out and got Tristan Thompson. He only there to play defense and rebound. 
and give you a couple extra fouls on a big dude. They need to get, you know, but if they can find a starter that's a defensive enforcer, that'll help them go a long way. Because technically, Sabonis ain't really a defensive dude. He gives rebounds, but he's not a defensive dude. And then you really ain't got a defensive edge at power forward. They don't really have a defensive edge at small forward. And they guard, you know, they come up with steals in the open court and transition, but they're not really stoppers on defense. So they need either a small forward or a power forward that can play some lockdown D or at least get some good block shots in the paint. And then that'll be, that'll be, that'll make them solid right there. That'll change their whole defensive mindset. Because remember, Mike Brown is a defensive minded coach. Somehow he's able to get that offense going with the 20 cents ranked defense. So he's usually a defensive minded coach. So they still got a lot of growth. So we'll see how that happens after this year, depending on how far they go. But I'm happy for them, man. They, they did the unexpected and they in there. They did what they had to do. And we'll see what happens. It's a weird ass West this year, man. It's a weird ass West. It's a weird yeah, ass a, world. <laughs> it's, weird it's, ass for sure, it's for sure up for grabs. I mean, you like got anybody, who, anybody can get it. You know what I mean? Like anybody yeah. in the West can get it. Like, who would have thought that it'd be Denver, Memphis, and Sac? Three small well, Dem- market Denver, teams. Denver's three been good small, for a while. Yeah, no, Sac's they've been the good. Only but, surprise. I'm saying, but I'm saying three small market teams with the top three records in the West. And your big market, big name teams is all scratching to get out of the play in. Yeah, crazy. but who's really who's really a big market team in the West though that that proved anything? Lakers been bad the last year or two. Clippers yeah, are the but, Clippers. But when they, at the trade deadline, though, the Lakers made moves and they became like the top top defensive team in the league after the All Star break. And then, like right. I said, they still got star power though. You got AD and LeBron. You got the Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George. You got Phoenix with Chris Paul, Booker, and KD. Like, they was all scratching the claw to stay in the playoffs. You got Dallas with Luka and Kyrie. They didn't even get in. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you got these small market teams floating at the top. So, it's been a weird-ass West. But I'm here for it. I'm here for it. It's probably the best I've ever talked on this show, but I'm here for it. I'll make sure we got three twos on the show, and that's what's going on right now. I mean, yeah. the uh, this yeah. ain't the first yeah. time I had three dudes on the show at the same time, and we yeah, ain't talking right. about it's sports. I ain't, I ain't talking right, about it. I'm trying to get it filled in because right. I definitely don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I don't even watch TV like that, so. Yeah, shit. I don't right. care. My, my my radio stay on ESPN radio when I'm at work all day. I, I stay up on everything, all every little tick. You know what I mean? Nice. Every little bit of information, everything. Not bad at it. Nice. But you're not wrong though. Oh, go ahead, man. I was gonna say you're not wrong though. That's why I'm just sitting up here listening, cause I mean like you're not wrong. I'm going to just leave it at that. You're not wrong. I don't got to repeat you. You're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, we'll see what you do. You got to win the games, so we'll see what happens. And uh, I'm going to be watching yeah. enjoying. I might even be up in Reno on Saturday and put a couple little bets down just to see if I can I can uh, shake the fuck out of a tree. But, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm it just, man, really fingers, fingers crossed Mike Brown got something up his sleeve that uh, the uh, Warriors ain't ready for since he used to coach them. That he been kind of, and that's the X factor part. The fact that he was their assistant coach, he knows right. more about them than they know about the Kings, and that might be the only edge that they be able to build something off of that nobody's expecting. So we'll see what happens. You know who we'll knee hurt? Happens. You know what I'm saying? Who know who back ain't really that good? Like you know what I mean? Like he know who to set the screen on a little extra hard. Like same thing with Harrison yeah, Barnes. You know he. Was, Harrison Barnes is part of the championship run with them boys, too. So, you know, I'm just hoping that little bit of knowledge about them help us out this series. The only thing that caused me to pause is the Warriors did win the season, the season series three to one. That last game don't really count because the Kings didn't play their players. But, you know what I mean, take that out. It was two to one. So, it's not like the Kings got the edge all season on them. It's just hopefully they find enough to be able to push 
push the push the Warriors out, you know what I mean, and move on to the next. Because it looks like more than likely the Kings will probably end up playing shit with the Lakers in the next round if they go. Or Lakers or Lakers, well, Lakers got to no, win the next round. No, 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 no. We'll play, we'll play the Lakers winner of the uh, four or five. So Clippers oh, are Clippers oh, or shit, Suns. Yeah, yeah, Clippers, Suns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Suns are going to win because Paul George ain't completely healthy. I don't know if the Clippers got enough to play Phoenix without Paul George being healthy. We'll see how that works out. Hold on, let me. I gotta look at the thing again. Hold on, let me put my phone out. Let me not <laughs> be on the podcast giving misinformation. I might get sued for that. Yeah, you know I mean, let me, let me <laughs> check the playoff tree real quick. Defamation. Paul George, ain't Paul George ain't played in a couple weeks. He sprained his knee. So <clears throat> we'll see how that play out. <laughs> Because KD, KD, since he started, since the in the few games he's played, Phoenix ain't lost with KD in the lineup. So we are gonna see what happens. Well, what are the playoffs? Uh, the playoffs haven't started yet, then, y'all. No, the playing uh, game started. There's some more playing games tomorrow. To decide who gets the eighth seed in the East and the West, and then playoff first official playoff game starts Saturday. Roger that. Well, I wish the Kings the best of luck. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just a supporter. Let's Let's see. So if we win, so if we win our game. We got who we got next. Let me see. So we got winner of Lakers Grizzlies. Yeah, see, yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I had to check. So yeah, winners of Lakers Grizzlies. So that's when the matchups get important at that point. So hey, but yeah, if we, we want the Lakers, hey, we want the Lakers though. I don't know. You know Do they really want these Lakers? Oh, over the over <laughs> over the, over the Grizzlies because John Morant. Like yeah, we have yeah, we have yeah. trouble with teams with like like same shit it. with Minnesota. We have teams we have trouble with teams with like just hella strong two guards. Yeah, they gotta pick their poison. That's the thing. It's gotta go through the gauntlet, man, to get to the the chip in the West. Everything so else we go can kind of deal with. Gotta go through some real superstars to get to that in the West. You know what I mean? So I but, think we got know, a good I think we got a good record against the Lakers this year, even after they trade. Maybe so, maybe so. Yep. Nah, I know it ain't bad. Be, it's gonna be exciting. Gonna be some exciting uh, matchups in basketball. So I'm looking forward to that because most of the time, man, when football season ain't in, I'll be depressed. But basketball gives me a little bit of salvation. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm ready for this playing salvation. tomorrow to see this see this last couple of games. Um, cause <clears throat> man, I just uh, I just I really enjoy this new format. This playing format is just go crazy to me. So I like the way that my bad. I'm all I'm still over here. I'm all I know y'all see me all on my phone. Now, I'm looking I'm, at every I'm little lost. <laughs> detail. I'm lost about the play-in. Shit, I didn't know they had to play in the playoffs in the NBA. So mm-hmm. well, they started what like three four three four years ago, something like that. It was a way yeah. to get teams to stop trying to tank because they get eliminated early. You had too many teams trying to tank for draft spots. So they said, let's add in these playing spots so teams don't just automatically think they got to cakewalk into the playoffs to start tanking games. So if you're the 10 seed, you got a shot. So they made it a little more exciting. So teams still fight for it to the end. And the West, the Last few playoff spots wasn't decided to the last game of the season, so yeah. it actually worked. This year, it actually worked the way it was designed. It worked the way it was designed this year. So. Got a little college playoff feel to it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I think that's look, what they was a little March for. Madness. A little hey, March I heard, Madness. 
I heard next year they're doing like a mid-season tournament or something. They trying to. The players don't really want that one, but we'll yeah, see but how it that passed. Play out. It passed at the owners' meeting, though. So. Yeah, we'll see how we'll see how it play out. Plus, the owners is trying to take back power from all this uh, player empowerment bullshit and, and stars sitting out of game. You know what I mean? So we'll see how it work out. Hey, I don't, I, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with the owners, but I also don't necessarily agree with the players either because they got a little too much leeway when it comes to not playing ball. Like they should, they should play some ball. Like, I mean, I understand like if you hurt then for real hurt, you know, then don't play. But like they, man, they'd be sitting out for like, they'd be like, I'm, I'm having a bad day. I'm sitting out. Like, come on, yeah. man. Like, you guys yeah. getting paid hell of money just to hoop. Just go out there and hoop. Hell of a bread. Hell of a bread. Because then, hell believe me, it might, you might not see as many dunks, but I get out there and hoop for your half your salary. Okay. You know I'm saying? out there and hoop right. for 130 on salary. What are you talking about? Right now. You let <laughs> me know. What do you on? want? I'll work on that jump shot, everything. You feel me? Believe me not, and and I'll make sure the competition my age, so it looks hella competitive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do it. I feel it. All right, y'all. All right. That would be hella dope if they if they had a league where you have to be a certain age before you can be a rookie. Like, you can't be a rookie before 35. <laughs> It'd be an old ass league. Hey. They do got those leagues. They at the YMCA. <laughs> right, but I want to make millions in my league, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, y'all, man. We've been on this thing for almost two hours. I think I'm all caught up on the NBA. Go for it. I mean, I feel like the Kings is going to do something. I think they're going to beat the Warriors because I don't think a lot of people think they're going to. That's just word on the streets. I mean, got to play the game, so we're going to find out real soon. Hey, yeah, it's the year the underdogs right now. If San Diego no, you... State can make it to the championship game, the Kings can make it past first round. Hey, it's the reason the Kings was the three seed. It wasn't no fluke. They didn't fluke their way to the three seed. They didn't. They didn't get to take advantage of a lot of these teams that quote unquote got hurt. Mm-hmm. The Kings really had to play all these games against people's top players. We had Kari. We had uh, Kyrie dumped in our lap, and then had to play like three games against the Mavericks. Like yeah, I mean we had a bunch of a bunch of shit. We had uh, Westbrook traded to the Clippers. And they turned into a super team. We had the Lakers turn into a super team, oh, no. like, and we and we beat them all. Yeah, so, the time. I mean, just, just just watch for us. Definitely watching. Definitely watching. That's Sacramento. <laughs> hey, I was gonna uh, say. Uh, you know, what's his face? Sold his stake in the Kings after all the years of coming to Cowtown. Uh, fucking uh, Shaq had partial ownership of the Kings until like the year before last. He sold it at the wrong time. <laughs> he sold his shares at the wrong time. <laughs> Did he sell all his shares? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Too bad for that's him. For him. And 50 Cent bought in to, uh, not, he didn't buy ownership stake, but you know his champagne is the official champagne of the Kings, 50 Cent uh, champagne yeah. brand. So he got in at the right time. Because <laughs> they still pouring bottles after mm-hmm. the regular season is over with. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, what a, hey, what a time to buy in with your champagne when the team is just like pouring champagne out everywhere before they even start drinking it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just go get a case of champagne to pour on the ground. All right, cool. <laughs> Give some to everybody. We're all going to pour some on the ground. <laughs> now we're going to drink it. Like, man, you just made so much money. And if we win a championship, they might give the whole arena a champagne bottle to pour on the ground. Like, hey, you know, you know how we are. 
It might. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going to go on and, uh, like Trek said, sign off, man. I just arrived to the work spot, so I'm going to go make these ducats. You know what I mean? And uh, next episode, man. Hey, Trek, I want you to give us some... I want you to give some hardcore questions slash topics for the next show, man. Let's dig well, into some- I I was, but y'all got to talking about sports, and what am I supposed to do? Jump in and say, hey, hey, break this shit up. Yeah, because uh, you the moderator. Yeah, you the host. Yeah. You the host. You're supposed to be you're like, Molly, yeah. you like Molly Karam. Yeah, okay. this this was a chill show. All my shows are pretty serious and shit. So I, I figured we have a laid back one. Let and let's talk about some easy shit for a minute. But next show, we'll definitely get back into the groove of things, of course. Oh, good. I enjoy myself. Appreciate you having me. Always, always, fellas. I appreciate y'all coming through. DJ Roll, appreciate you for holding down the fort. And uh, I guess we all going to tap out then. I, I will definitely be in touch with y'all, of course, offline. But to all the viewers and watchers, you can see us again in two weeks. Should have some, some really yeah, yeah. good, should have a really good, good show as per usual. Um, if anybody want to drop anything, any events, any social media tags, anything you want to say before you go, feel free now. Woodsman Handyman Services, located in Sacramento, California. If you need something fixed, call your boy. I do it for affordable prices. And I do it right the first time. Say that name again. Woodsman Handyman Services. You can reach me at woodsmanhms at gmail.com. That's woodsman, W-O-O-D-S-M-A-N, H-M-S at gmail.com. Get your shit right. Get it done at an affordable price by good brother. Jimmy, you still on the line or you gone? I'm about to get off. But yeah, go ahead and follow me, man. Find me on Facebook. You know what I mean? Or you hit me on, matter of fact, more on Instagram at underscore hurricane underscore James. If not, tune in in two weeks and you'll see me again. I love y'all, <laughs> but I'm up out of here. Talk to y'all soon. Peace, James. Don't work too hard. Oh, I'm not. I work smart, not hard, baby. That's it. <laughs> uh, DJ. Raw 60 million. And Roselle Joiner on uh, Facebook. And there it is. Um, D, you know, you always welcome to come back as well. I'll be on your line. Uh, good. I'll definitely, when I get time, because I had time today, and when I get more time, I would love to be back. So. Appreciate you. Um, Roselle, you going out with an intro? Yep, let's do it. Or outro, my bad. Yep. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Always tune back in. No Better Do Better Thursdays, every second and fourth Thursday at 8 p.m. YouTube channel right here on No Better Do Better. Have a good rest of the week. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Be you. Ever since I left the city.